hello and welcome back if you are new welcome today I'm going to continue reading from the document titled the pyramid code again this document is from it was put out by Jason Shurka so there will be a link to his website below I'm also going to upload a PDF copy of the document uh, on my website so it'll be on the resource page so you can either go to Jason's website and download it or you can go to the resource page of my blog and download it there as well all right so oh and before I forget because this is episode five I think uh, you can find the previous episodes for the series from the reading of this document and the pyramid code playlist and also consciousness beyond 3d playlist all right so now let's get into it the fattest old dynasty contrary to common knowledge and belief the hebrews of egypt did not live a life of suffering <clears throat> and did not perform forced labor the way it is described they were more like servants and slaves and they lived their lives as second class or even third class citizens they did not have rights like the Egyptians, and they did not get paid for their work. They only received food, <clears throat> clothing, and shelter. They did not own any assets. Everything was given to them by the Egyptians, more accurately the Pharaoh. The last Pharaoh, and the one who ruled during my first incarnation, Vicky in my current reincarnation, <clears throat> was relatively cruel and harder on the people than the ones before him. Despite being an entity with higher powers, just like all of the other pharaohs before him, although he was not a pure fatasol, he was still considered a god to the nation. His wife was Pharaoh, Tova in my current reincarnation. Pharaoh died at a relatively young age. She was a pure fatasol who went through the Baraka process at a young age and became a high priestess before she married the pharaoh, which is Vicky in my current reincarnation. It is not clear to me why she died at such a young age. It was more definite, or it was most definitely not typical for an offspring of Fatasol to die at such a young age. Even more interesting is how the pharaoh, or Fatahotep, didn't succeed in healing her, if indeed she was sick. But the magical staff that they had in their possession I know many souls who were helped and saved from death with the magical staff. I suppose she reached her destiny in this reincarnation. Roka, Tina, in my current reincarnation, who was Farah's daughter, went through the Baraka process in the holy temple in the Pharaoh's palace under the supervision of Adahota, who was the high priest, which was customary of every Pharaoh ch child from the offspring of Adasol. Mano and Roka built a very close relationship as young children, as they were both students of the priesthood. They spent a lot of time together, worked together, and learned together. Roka loved and was loved by Mano since she was a child. Their love was destroyed because she chose to marry her father, which was very accepted at the time, and due to her mother's death because she, like the pharaoh, was from the offspring of Adasol from the start. The love between Mano and Roka never stood a chance to come to fruition since Mano was originally a Hebrew servant. Whereas Roka was from the Fatasol dynasty, Roka had to pass the Baraka process in order to be worthy to marry her father, Pharaoh, Vicky in my current reincarnation. Which is a process that took many years. At the age of 18 years old, Roka married her father, Pharaoh. In the wedding ceremony in which Mana was present along with the rest of the priest, Roka received the title of the Queen of the Pharaohs, as well as the title of the High Priestess, who possessed immense power and knowledge. Roka had a personal assistant since she was born, who was named Mur, Miriam, my wife in my current reincarnation. Mur was a short, old, fat, and mentally limited woman. Mur was very obsessive over Roka. Mur felt as though she was more than just a servant or a mother to Roka. According to my memory, Mur was a simple Egyptian woman who never married nor brought children to the world. Roka had a daughter named Gamma, Mina in my current reincarnation, who was also set to go through the Baraka process since she was a daughter of the Pharaoh. 
She went through the Baraka process in the holy temple of the pharaoh's palace under the supervision of Fatahotep. Manahotep was a teacher to German as well. Mano and Gamma fell in love. In the year 2448, they took advantage of the period of the Great Confusion, which is the Exodus, and fled with the Hebrews to, Hebrews to the land of Israel. In the year 2449, according to the Hebrew calendar, Mano and Gamma got married in the desert on the way to the Holy Land, when Mano was 50 and Gamma was 17. Their wedding was on the 1st of Tishrei, which was also Mano's birthday. They chose not to have children and instead dedicated their lives to their spiritual work. They both lived very long and full lives and died together in the evil fires of the destruction of the first holy temple, their home, in Jerusalem before the Babylonian exile on the ninth of Ab in the year 3339 according to the Hebrew calendar, 421 BC according to the Gregorian calendar. Manna was 930 years old and Gamma was 906 years old. Their bodies were never buried. They both served as high priests until the day that they died. Gamma was a head priestess, deputy of the high priest, Sarya, which was Mano's new name, title in Israel. It's secrecy because it was not accepted at the time for a woman, especially a Gentile, to hold such a position of power. Gamma was an Egyptian woman of the pharaohs from the offspring of Phatasol. She never converted her destiny or her essence into Judaism, but she was part of the new Jewish nation and highly respected by all. It is important to note that although Mano and Gamma loved and married each other, their connection and relationship would have never been accepted by the Pharaoh if they would have stayed in Egypt because of Mano's past of being a Hebrew slave and Gamma being the granddaughter of the Pharaoh. As priests, Mano and Gamma attained the ability to experience and see unlimited strength of higher powers, downfalls, wars, and plagues. They earned the ability to see, work with, and accompany the most powerful people of the Jewish nation. They were also part of the Jewish nation's journey in fulfilling its destiny all the way to its downfall on the ninth of Ab in the year 3339, 421 BC, according to the Gregorian calendar. They hid religious objects and mystical magical tools of different kinds under the dome of the rock in Jerusalem, and that technology is still there today, waiting to be found and brought to the world's awareness. Among the different objects buried under the Holy Temple exists three original Torahs that were written by Moses and his assistants. I emphasize his assistants. When Mano and Gamma fled from Egypt during the Exodus, they were able to take the magical staffs and bury them under the Holy Temple. The Torah in those days was learned as oral Torah and not the Torah that we know today. Mano and Gamma served the nation for many years with the knowledge they acquired in Egypt as priests. They did so according to the laws of the Jewish religion. Started to get some downloads, revelation, which uh, a lot of those who channel and, and things like that often call it download. So it's interesting to try to read through the material and downloads starting to come through at the same time. So uh, as high priest, Mano and Gamma knew how to communicate with animals through speech and telepathy. Others from the royal palace, such as Pharaoh, Roka, and Fatahotep knew how to do this as well. The last Pharaoh's favorite animal was a lion named Chisham, my dog in my current reincarnation. Chisham was very close to Roka, Gamma, and Mano when they were kids in the Pharaoh's palace. They went their separate ways when they left Egypt during the period of the Great Confusion, Exodus. Chisham was born in the year 2415 and died in the year 2450 according to the Hebrew calendar, which is 1345 BC through uh, 1310 BC according, according to the Gregorian calendar. All right, so I don't have much to add to this because I've in previous videos I've talked about uh, the incarnations and the uh, number of years that people live and die, etc. And I've touched briefly on that and and kind of correlated that with 
the genealogy in the Bible. As I'm reading through this, so, and I'm going to go back to Neville Goddard's lectures quite often because when I, because that really, his teachings truly initiated my awakening from my perspective. Although I know now it has been an ongoing journey my entire life. Okay, so, um, Neville provides the symbolism to the terms Egypt and Pharaoh, Moses, his state of consciousness, etc. in his lectures. So I have started creating a, uh, I have a directory of those uh, uh, terms now and the meaning, the symbolism that Neville Goddard um, provides. And as I go through the lectures and break down that symbolism, in the online courses that I have, the self-study courses and, and the VIP groups, uh, there, if you are interested in any of that information and joining the VIP group or doing the self-study courses or even reading those lectures, which you can download from the resource page on my blog, uh, links are in the description box, uh, you can formulate your own uh, opinion, your perspective, based on what resonates with you and what correlates uh, or how you see things as correlating. So it's very interesting now from my perspective, my level of awareness to look at the different viewpoints and find the correlations. So again, I have taken uh, things from Neville's lectures, his teachings, broken down the symbolism and I've done the same with scripture and I'll continue to do so. So. Uh, I just wanted you to be aware if you're interested. Also, to understand more regarding creation and the Egyptian civilization, uh, Atlantis, uh, Lemuria, things like that, things beyond what we physically see now, what we are physically experiencing, or are maybe even only aware of, especially if you if you are currently still primarily um, within the 3D consciousness, if you are still working through things um, that you need to work through as you awaken uh, before you can primarily reside within the 4D and uh, 5D dimensions, uh, I would recommend a show on Gaia titled uh, In Initiation, A Journey to the Origins of the universe, I believe that's what it's called. Um, and that is, uh, the narrator is Mateo de uh, Santos, who talks about his previous reincarnations, etc. Very interesting show. I think they're about three seasons. Eventually here on my channel, I'm going to be going through that series as well and looking at the correlation. So just wanted to, uh, to mention that. Let's see if I have time to go through this next. Yeah. So I have time. I'm going to go through this next little paragraph. Uh, after the Exodus, and the the download that was starting to come through, I was kind of thinking back to Neville's lecture and talking about the Exodus and moving from uh, states of consciousness, etc. So again, as they start to come through and I'm reading at the same time, it's, it's difficult to fully formulate that. So I may have to do that at a later time. <clears throat> so after the Exodus, on the 15th of Nisan in the year 2448, according to the Hebrew calendar, uh, in 1312 BC, according to the Gregorian calendar, Mano and Gamma, along with the Hebrews, left Egypt and arrived to Mount Sinai, which is actually Mount Karkum in present day on the oh, excuse me on the 1st of Saban on the 6th of Saban in the year 2448 the holiday of Shavuot God came down to Mount Sinai and spoke the Ten Commandments the following day on the 7th of Saban Moses went up to the mountain for 40 days to get the Ten Commandments Moses came down with the Ten Commandments the tablets on the 17th of Tammuz 2448 and broke them out of anger due to the infamous golden calf story the nation sin moses went up to the mountain once again on the 18th of tammuz for 40 days 
to ask for forgiveness and atonement for the sins of the Hebrews. He came down on the 28th of Av. Moses went up onto the mountain for the third time for another 40 days on the 29th of Av after sunset to get the second set of the tablets, which is still preserved under the Dome of the Rock, the Muslim Mosque in Jerusalem. Moses came down from the mountain on the Day of Atonement. Yom HaKippurim in Hebrew, according to the Hebrew calendar on the 10th of Tishrei in the year 2449 at sunrise. According to the Hebrew calendar 1311 BC according to the Gregorian calendar. For the last time, although there are no codes in these writings, I am purposely giving you the details of the date since they will be important on or they will be important one of these days. Whoever knows the code for the book Rays of Light as well as the pyramid code will find these dates and details used quite often to continue their work and understanding. The end of the Pharaonic era came with the Exodus. As this era came to an end, the secrets of the universe, along with different technologies, were lost. Among the sacred technologies that perished were magnets, lasers, and light energy, which were used to build the pyramids. <clears throat> From this point forward, Egypt declined and eventually became what, what it is today, a poor and primitive nation. My father, my guide, and my rabbi, Rabbi A.A., was the man who planned the Exodus. He was also the secret helper to Moses throughout the negotiations to release the Hebrews <clears throat> from slavery and into freedom. My father, until the day he died, was the right-hand man to Moses along with the rest of the rulers of the military and the leaders who came after him. For me, he was a teacher, and with his help, I became the high priest in Jerusalem with neither myself nor my wife, who was not even a Hebrew, being part of the family of Aaron, the first high priest in Israel, or the Levite tribe. All right, a couple things I want to mention. So, <clears throat> I have had uh, a handful of mystical dreams. Uh, I could call them mystical dreams. A handful of dreams um, and events that correlate with uh, Mount Sinai for me it was a cave but the significance of it correlated with what happened on the story of, told of what happened on Mount Sinai um, I've had many dreams re, uh, regarding list and text which I believe correlate possibly with either the Akashic Records or the Ten Commandments or both. And numbers I have found um, are important. Most, re there's the simple, the numbers in, used often in the Bible have symbolism behind them. Uh, for me, the numbers that I have been, that have been coming into my awareness lately are the three, six, and nine, which have to do, um, I'm in meditation about a week or so ago, uh, the, I was being taken through the, a series of numbers, three, six, nine, but not as most people see those numbers now, according to like Tesla and things like that. And I, again, I made notes on it. So if you follow my channel, and uh, you watch my other videos, a lot of this stuff will be, um, I'll talk about when I do the, the mystical dreams videos, when I record those, uh, those events that I experience and those. So if you're interested, I have a current playlist on that. Um, and then I have a lot more stuff that I have, haven't even shared yet. And the most recent stuff is more, uh, is more through meditation and um, past lives and things like that. So it's be it's oh it's a healing events and and things like that's becoming very very interesting. So anyway, all right, I'm going to end the video for now, and um, the next segment is titled the priesthood. So 
Uh, again, don't forget to check out the links bef uh, below. You can download a copy of this either on Jason's website, Jason Shurka, uh, the resource page of my uh, of my blog, my website, and the show from Gaia, Initiation Journey to the Origins of the Universe, is a very interesting show. Um, I first watched that show like months ago and I talked about it in a video I there were immediately things that resonated with me um, in correlation with what I had read in Neville's lectures and I hadn't even come across the pyramid code or rays of light yet but I found the correlations so it's again it's just interesting when you're very aware and as things resonate with you when they're meant to resonate with you how you begin to see the patterns, the correlations, and how you're able to piece the puzzles. Piece the puzzle pieces together, or at least begin to, right? Um, so anyway, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Check out the links, check out the playlist if you'd like. Uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And that is it. I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye now.